All right, guys. We did a gate of 5.7 million, 14,856 in, att in attendance. The fight of the night is GSP and Hendricks. The KO of the night is Woodley. Oh. Submission of the night is Cerrone. They all won $50,000. Congratulations to them. Real quick stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Going to announce two of the uh, upcoming events in 2014. Uh, UFC Fight Night card at the, uh, at the arena, Gwinnett Center, on January 15th. Will be a middleweight bout between Luke Rockhold and Costa uh, Philippou. Tickets go on sale December 6th. And then the UFC on Fox card that will take place at the United Center in Chicago on January 5th will uh, be headlined by Benson Henderson and Josh Thompson. Tickets go on sale December 6th for that too. Both are five round fights. And uh, UFC 171 will take place March 15th at American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Who has the first question? Uh, Dane, I wanted to ask uh, George and Johnny this, but uh, I saw... George went straight to the hospital, and Johnny's doing an interview. He'll be here in two minutes. Okay. Uh, you, I saw on the Internet, thought that uh, Johnny clearly won the fight, and you weren't... Ha I don't know if happy was the right word, but you didn't agree with George's decision to walk away. Does anybody here think that Johnny Hendricks didn't win the fight? Meltzer thinks George won? There's other people ahead, George. Yeah. But what did you think it was? One, three, and five, uh, George. Yeah. One, three, and five? Did you see George... At did you see George get smashed and hurt in the first round? Yeah. It's about damage. This is a fight. It's whoever inflicts the most damage. You got hurt. You got wobbled. You got dropped. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. And listen, I'm a promoter. He's the biggest pay-per-view star on, on the fucking planet for me, and I still don't think he won that fight. I want what's fair, and that, that wasn't fair. I think the Nevada State Athletic Commission is atrocious. I think the governor needs to step in immediately before these guys destroy this sport like they did boxing. Who has the next question? Well, if just to follow up on that, I mean, uh, we talk about it all the time. What alternatives are there? And, and, and specifically to Nevada. The when alternatives you are that the, that the governor needs to step in and fix the incompetence that is happening in the state of Nevada that used to be the best commission in the world. It's absolute 100% incompetence. And it needs to stop. It needs to end. I'm fucking scared to come back here and do fights. I'm afraid of this state. You know, and it's not about what's, what's uh, you know, I, and, and I guarantee if you did a poll, I mean, not many people think George St. Pierre won that fight. I, I, I haven't talked to anybody except Dave Meltzer and the other gentleman here who outside of here thinks that George St. Pierre won that fight. So... Uh what, were, what was your take? Can you explain what you said on television about you were upset that George was talking about retiring and not giving Johnny a I'm remit? upset about him. Listen, when a guy wants to retire, I mean, did he say he wants to retire? He didn't say, I'm, I'm going to retire. I'm hanging it up. It's been great, everybody. Thanks a lot for all the years. See you later. He said, I'm going to take some time off. And I'm gonna, listen, no. <laughs> First of all, that decision that happens, right, you, you, don't, you don't just say, hey, I'm going to take a, a while off. And maybe I'll be back. Maybe I won't. You owe it to the fans. You owe it to that belt. You owe it to this company. And you owe it to Johnny Hendricks to give him that opportunity to, to, to fight again. Unless you're going to retire. You know? I told you guys a million times. He's got plenty of money. He can retire. That's a fact. He could absolutely, positively do that. Um, there's no, hey, listen, I'm going to go on a cruise and, you know, I'm going to be gone for two years and, you know, I'm going to take a hiatus. I'm going to, I'm going to take a leave of absence. I'm going to, whatever the hell it was that he was saying, uh, that's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. Would you try to convince him to be back sooner rather than later? What's that? Would you try to convince him to come back sooner than later? You bet your ass I will, my friend. Uh, Dana, Richard Hunter, CBS Radio. Uh, you said at the press conference that you didn't believe George was retiring when everybody was asking questions. Did what he say? It was what he said tonight come as a shock to you? Um, no, he didn't retire. I mean, well, he didn't that he retire. needs time away. Did that? Right. Did it surprise you? That's weird. Yeah. So you it's didn't very, know. It's very you, weird. No, you, I had no there idea. had been no conversation I was dead between I didn't you guys. Know what he was doing? Yeah. Listen, George St. Pierre has always been a stand-up, amazing human being and a great champion. You know, I couldn't say enough good things about George St. Pierre. Could not. It's not George St. Pierre's fault that the judges said he won this fight tonight. It's not his fault. I'm not blaming George St. Pierre. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a fight promoter, and we run a business, and he's, he's the biggest fighter in, in, in the sport. You know, I should be, woohoo, all right, 
These idiots gave it to George. But it's not fair. It's not right. It's not it's not the way things work. It's not the way they should work. At the end of the day, we put on a fight with two of the best guys in the world, and whoever wins, wins. It's the way it works. Assuming, obviously, you'd like to see a rematch and knowing what George said tonight, do you have a realistic timetable in your mind that things could sort of be on hold within the division to see if we can get this rematch made six months, maybe the big July card? Yeah, I don't know. I, obviously, I need to talk to him. I need to, uh, you know, I'll talk to him. And one more question. I, I'm sorry, I missed when you said the uh, Dallas State, the American Airlines Center uh, UFC card was going to be? 171. Okay, because what I was going to say is uh, it seems like a Johnny Hendricks, George St. Pierre rematch would be tailor made for that Cowboy Stadium show you're always talking friend. about. Uh, let's make that happen. All right. I'm with you. Uh, da Dana, down here in the, f in the front. Yep. Uh, d did George share with you? Uh, George he... stepped out of the octagon, went straight to an ambulance, and straight to the hospital. And, and just so we have it straight, you're upset at the, the judging this fight. Are you, are you, sounds like you're upset at St. Pierre as well. If so. Oh, I'm not upset at St. Pierre. It's just, you know, first of all, I'll tell you this. I was up in the octagon. They knew they lost. I was in there. They knew they lost that fight. They knew it. And uh, obviously they were thrilled. It's not George's fault. George didn't say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to make myself the winner. The, 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 the judges did. It's not his fault, but to, to get up there, and especially after you were just in a fight like that, to say that I'm going to take some time off and I'm going to, uh, you know, what, I, I don't even know what it meant, what he said. doesn't make sense to me, but you don't w do it. Wouldn't it be worthwhile finding out what he's got on his mind before dumping on him? No. No, it wouldn't, <laughs> because here's the thing. If he had like a, uh, let, let's say he had a, uh, um, you know, health problems or, or something like that, he wouldn't be fighting if he had health problems. You're the world champion. You've held the belt for seven years. You've been in this company forever. First of all, it, you, you know you, you don't go up there after a fight like that and just say, hey, listen, I'm going to go take some time off and do whatever. If that's the case, retire. Retire. It, it could be. I, I, guess what? Lorenzo, I'll see you in a year and a half. I'm going I'm to fucking take off for a little while. I got some shit to do. But you might not be thinking too clearly if you just had some. some but obviously they had a plan before minutes. the fight happened. But that's the best. This is his job. This is what he does, and he gets paid a lot of money to do it. So I'm going to take a year and a half off because I've, I've got some shit to do, and uh, maybe a year and I don't know. Got some personal problems that I got to deal with. How do you think that that would fly? It just you don't you don't do stuff like that. You don't you don't uh, come off of a fight like that and and. and uh, it, it's just not. It's not right. It's it's not right. Johnny Hendricks won that fight, and uh, he should have the opportunity to fight again. What's that? Paid time off. He could take all the time off he wants. I always tell you how big his bank account is. Trust me. He can retire right now. He could retire right now and be fine. Uh, you, know, you know, he was made a lot of money. Dana, if, uh, if George says that, uh, you know, I mean, I guess it depends on how long he's going to be gone, but if he says, let's say, nine months or one year, would you do a thing where you could say, okay, vacate the title, and then come back, and when you come back, maybe you can challenge for the title if he's going to be gone for too long? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just it's crazy. It's just the whole thing makes no sense. Um, vacate the title, go away for a while. It's just, you know. Well, if he's gone for It's just, this is so not George St. Pierre. You know what I mean? So... It, no, it just doesn't. I don't know. I, I don't even know. It's I've never I mean, dealt it, with this before. If he's gone for a year, you, you're gonna have to do something. Right. Yeah, I agree. I have a question for Jail and Rashad. Uh, Jail down here. Um, before the fight, you had talked about Rashad's ability to take you down, and you you weren't sure if you could defend it. I'm curious how you're feeling about the fight now that it's happened. Now that now that uh, we we've seen that he could take you down. Um, was he stronger than you thought he was going to be? Just kind of your assessment after the fight here. Uh, you know, I had one significant problem, which was I took on a better fighter tonight. And, uh, you know, I got mauled. And when he got in that top position, there, I just couldn't go anywhere. I had the fence on one side. I got a, a world champion on the other side. And I was trying, but he hit me so hard. And, uh, and then he did it again and again. And, yeah, I think that I, I could have some moments with him. I think that I've got some spots where I could uh, be a lot more competitive. But that wasn't one. Once, once he got on top of me, um, 
I just couldn't get, we could still be out there. I'd still be down. I just couldn't get up. And Sugar, after the fight now that you, you know, we've gotten this over with, I know you guys weren't really excited necessarily about fighting each other. I mean, how does it, how did, did you feel mentally going in there? And did you have that feeling that you usually get, you know, when you're really going in there to put the hurt on somebody? Um, yeah, you know, I had to uh, really just, you know, make myself really get in the mindset because uh, I knew he was trying to win, you know, trying to beat me. So I had to really get myself in the mindset to do that. And I want to go in there and put a good, a good show on. You know, this is the UFC 20th anniversary, and I don't want to be the one fight that stunk up the card. So uh, I told myself, uh, come hell, come high water, I was going to go out there and fight my ass off and, and leave it all out there and just see what happens. Nice. And lastly, one question for you, Tyron. Uh, was there any sense of wanting to make a statement after the Jake Shields fight? I know you came out explosively against Jay Haran, and then things didn't go your way against Jake. Was there was there a statement you wanted to make tonight? Um, you know, I think um, it's, it's time off for me sitting on gifts. Guys blessed me with some true talent and some explosive ability, and you know, put that with some hard work and mindset. That um, if you give me the gifts, I got to use it. So I came out this fight. I knew this guy was going to be smoking, blazing guns, and um, you know, I knew I had to be a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, and I had to be first. And that's what happened today. You know, I saw that I had him hurt. And I know he recovers very well, like nothing ever happened. So I took my time with it, and I saw another opportunity. And I just threw my whole life into that punch, and, um, you know, I landed him on the ground. Hello, uh, Dana, just to follow up on the uh, George St. Pierre situation, was there absolutely no indication from his camp or people regarding what he needed time off for or to step away for? No. No, I haven't heard anything. Uh, moving on to Robbie Lawler here. That was a huge win for you tonight over a highly touted welterweight. How do you feel coming off of that fight, and what do you think it does for you? I feel great, and uh, I think we should probably do, like, if George takes off for a half a year or a year, Hendricks and I fight for, like, an interim title, and when George comes back, I'll beat him up too. Let's do this. And last one, just to follow up on that, Tyron, you had a huge fight also tonight, you know, knockout of the night here. So uh, you had said in the pre-fight press conference that you're hungry for the title also. What are your thoughts on this situation with George St. Pierre? You know, it's, it's our job as um, Fighters from American Top Team. It's a great organization. And, um, you know, nobody's brought home the UFC gold. So me, me, Robbie, and Hector and whoever else, we're going to race for it. And, um, you know, that's a part of the luxury of having a sport like this. You know, this is a platform where – you get to showcase your ability, your talent from all different um, levels. So I'm definitely hungry, hunting for the title. I'm watching all these fights like chess match. I'm looking at Robbie and Roy's fight. I'm looking at Carlos Conan and Matt Brown fight. I'm looking at Tarek and Jake Ellenberger's fight. You know, all you need is one good win. You can step right in the pocket. I'm going to be ready when it's my time. Uh, uh, Cowboy, uh, down hey, just to your right. Hey. Um, you said in the uh, in in the cage that you uh, I think did you say a great man or an important man that you you uh, who who were you referring to when you uh, when you said you had that good talk? Oh, to before? my grandfather. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just the last couple of fights I just couldn't find my my fire the the old me the way I used to fight you know and uh, it's just if I didn't have that you know I was, I was telling myself to go out there and pull the trigger, you know, and tonight was the, the show to do it. Dana gave one hell of a speech uh, at the after weigh-in, so it got us all fired up. The fights were kind of slow in the beginning, so I was like, man, let's let's, let's pull the trigger and get this going, so. Um, you uh, you mentioned in the quote that was that was issued uh, to the media, um, you know, how you've made some money, and, you know, the, you didn't think it would happen to you. You know, you make some money, you still want to fight, but it, it, Kind of did happen. Absolutely, yeah. There's like a when when you get pushed up against the wall. There's like a you got to dig deep sometimes, and sometimes when you dig deep, it's not there, you know. And I, that's why I lost about it, you know, my last couple fights. And I had to go find that. I had to go figure out where the hell it went and, and, and look for it. And I feel like I got it back, man. I, I felt 100% walking out of this cage and, and get ready to go tonight. Uh, and just a quick one for Dana uh, about uh, hey uh, uh, Rory. Uh, now I might have just been looking at the fight incorrectly but it seemed like he wasn't throwing with his hands too much did you hear like anything backstage did he have a hand injury or no, I, I, or something the thing is about Rory Rory has a style where he 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 uh sort of nullifies the fight he does weird things he's not very active and not very busy unless he gets you down and gets that top position and that's why I said this is going to be a great fight for him because Robbie's Lawler style won't allow that you know, like when the, when the Ellenberger fight went out there, he, he nullified Ellenberger, and they just stood there and stared at each other, you know what I mean, for three rounds and had that 
that horrible fight. And that's his style. His style makes you look bad, and he doesn't do a lot of things unless he gets you down on, you know, he gets that top position, and he does some damage. And uh, um, you can't do that with Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler's got good wrestling, and he comes in to take your head off. If he throws punches, then he's close enough for me to throw punches, and I don't think he wanted to be involved in that kind of stuff all the time. And obviously, it wasn't a good thing when he got close. And I mean, he's a really good fighter, but he's smart. He doesn't want to get in there and get nasty. Um, have you? Uh, I know it's only a couple hours since you know everything might still be a bit of a blur, but this year has been uh, you know pretty uh, pretty incredible for you since you've uh, since you've come back. Three wins, three fights. When when do you? You know, kind of sit back and just think about how things have, um, you know, turned back around for you. Uh, when I retire, because I'm pushing forward and I'm getting better every day and I want to fight and I want to be the best in the world. So I'm not going to be looking too much into what I've accomplished because there's so much ahead. Question for Johnny. Uh, Johnny, right in front of you. Do you feel like you're the uh, champion right now as you sit there? Yeah, I am the champion. Uh, I out-jabbed him, out-struck him, out-wrestled him. I did everything to win the fight, except for those two judges that didn't give it to me. I didn't prove it to them. Uh, that won't happen again. I'm going to come back stronger. I'm going to come back faster. And I'm going to bust my butt to get that belt. You know, it sucks that right now the belt's not sitting right here. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. That's nothing. You know, little mild stump. I just beat the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world. You know what I mean? Like, just, I just, I, look at him. Look at him and look at me. You know what I mean? My hands are busted up from hitting him in the face, you know? And the belt's not here. It sucks. But I promise you, that belt will be mine. Are you angry at all by, you know, what George said in the ring? I mean, whether he's taking a vacation or a retirement or whatever you want to call that. Uh, does that bother you that, you know, you can't plan for an immediate rematch? Dude, I don't care about George. That's why I said from the very get-go. I beat him anyways, okay? I just want the belt. That's all I want, that, that UFC belt right here in front of me. That's the only thing that's pushing me. That's the only thing that's motivating me. I don't care about who has it, who doesn't. I need to get that, and that's that's really my drive. And I thought I got it tonight, but I guess I didn't. You know, that was my first five-round fight. I thought I did excellent, but there's a lot of things I can pull from this fight. You know what I mean? I'm only going to get better. That was my first five-round fight, and I, I took it to the champ. And it didn't go my way to the judges, but guess what? I'm going to come back. This happened to me before, and I'm going to be better, and I'm, that belt will be around my waist. And, and last question for you. When you hit him with the big shot, the, the big left hand, you had him hurt there. Uh, you know, was that your good stuff, and did you feel like you, know, you were on the verge of finishing at that point? No, uh, I really didn't hit him that hard. Uh, the reason why, I wasn't really trying to knock him out. Uh, I knew it was going to be my first five-round fight, <laughs> so I was putting about 70% on him. Uh, you know, uh, it, and it, it was enough. You know, 70% of my power was enough. It uh, wasn't enough because you left it in the hands of the judges. It wasn't enough. You better do well, 100%. Next well, time. yes. Yes. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. But you know what? Here's the thing is that I knew that was my first five-round fight. Everybody's questioning, is my cardio going to be enough, right? So I went out strong, uh, and I thought I – did everything I could to win, you know, uh, 70%. I was rocking him. I was hurting him. I was doing it. Uh, and there were some shots that I did throw a little bit harder that were hitting his gloves. He was doing great defense, uh, taking nothing away from George St. Pierre. He was, he did an excellent job. Uh, just not tonight, you know, uh, but you know what? Here's the thing. If I get to see him in the ring again, it won't go to the distance. I will finish him. And, you know, um, I know I can go five rounds now. I proved that tonight. And, you know, it sucks. It, you know, they, the judges sort of ripped my heart out tonight. And I'm going to move forward. I'll get stronger. Um, <clears throat> Johnny, question over here. You can't see me, but I'll be able to go. <laughs> um, the difference in the fight was the first round. Looking at the judges' scorecards, that's the difference. Two judges scored the first round for George. 
one scored it for you. So I'll ask you, what do you remember about the first round, and how do you feel like they scored? How, how do you figure they scored that round for George in any way? Uh, well, the first round, he came out. He tried to establish a jab, which wasn't working. He was trying to throw a couple of kicks. I checked everything. He did get the takedown, but and he did try to do the guillotine on me at first. Uh, none of that was close. But at the end of the first round, I ended up getting a takedown myself. Uh, and I thought I controlled the fight from there on. You know, after the first two minutes, I thought it was all mine. Uh, and, you know, it sucks that you train so hard and you do stuff so, you know, I don't know how much better I could have fought that fight. Does that make sense? I went out there. I did my game plan. I, I, I out-jabbed him. I outdid everything, and the rest – the ref sort of, you know, you got to beat the champ, and I thought I did. Um, and that's sort of the, the end of the story, you know. Uh, I will, like I said, I'll be back. You know, this is just a little mild stepping stone for me. I'm only 30 years old. I'm, I'm still young at this sport. I've been doing it for six and a half years. You know, I'm still developing striking skills that I've, you know, I'm learning daily. So <clears throat> I'll be better. And we're dealing with a lot of unknowns right now because George made this, you know, obviously the weird statement about taking some time away or whatever. I don't know if he's going to Tahiti or what's going on. But in your mind, I mean, does it – I know you want the title. So, I mean, are you willing to do interim title? What do you hope is next for you? Yeah, uh, It's up to Dana White. You know, I, of course I want the title. You know what I mean? Of course. But it's up to this guy and uh, uh, Lorenzo and all, uh, Fatita, uh, you know, uh, my job is to fight and put on good shows, and hopefully I did that for you guys tonight. You know, my main goal uh, is to win the belt, but also make the fans happy with my performance. And the crowd was into the fight, uh, and that's sort of how I fight every fight. If the crowd's not ready for it and into my fights, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And a question for Robbie. Robbie, that third round was pretty phenomenal for you, obviously coming out hurting him really bad. Can you kind of walk us through that? And did you talk to Rory after? He seemed to bolt from the octagon pretty quick and kind of, you know, kind of ran out of there. Did you even get a chance to say anything to him after the fight? Yeah, I talked to him. I just said, uh, just be you, and who cares what all the fans think as long as he stays true to himself. But, I mean, I don't really know Rory that much, and so I just said that was a good fight. And that's about it. Thanks. Johnny, you were confident heading in into this fight. During the fight, did you was there a moment like a breakthrough moment where you know I'm I'm going to be able to win this fight? And then secondly, in the fifth round, did you feel like you needed to fight more fiercely than maybe you did in that round to to ice it away? Uh, no, I thought I got you know I thought like I said from two minutes in, I thought it was my fight. I thought I was I was handling everything. You know I clearly won. I thought I clearly won the first, second, and. You know, third one was a little bit, you know, iffy. But I thought I went out the fourth round and secured my win. You know, and the fifth round, I uh, I was thinking, stay strong, stay active. You know, don't really change anything. Um, and that wasn't the right game plan, obviously. You know what I mean? Uh, he got my leg. I was comfortable there. I knew he was going to try to take me down, but he got me down for two seconds. Didn't do nothing with it. Uh, and I got back to my feet, and I started landing punches again. Uh, and, you know, I, I'll go back and watch the film uh, footage and see what I could have done better. You know, that's pretty much all I can do. Yeah, good day. Uh, website, Valley to the Point, are you from Russia? Uh, the question to Ali Bogotinov. Your nickname is uh, Puncher King, but what's happened today? And it was only decision, unanimous, but decision. Твоя кличка это Панчер. Почему сегодня ты не закончил бой нокаутом, как мы привыкли это видеть, а прошел всю дистанцию? Спасибо за вопрос. На самом деле 20 лет UFC и как бы хотелось на телевидении побыть подольше. Еще когда вышел в клетку, я увидел крупным планом. Арнольда, Арнольда Шварценеггера, который смотрел на меня, и хотелось как-то выделиться, и чтобы он на меня тоже посмотрел. Вот, я думаю, что это у меня получилось. Я даже с ним сфотографировался. Вот, пожалуйста. 
You're right. My nickname is Pancha, and uh, I was given that nickname because I love to finish my fights quickly by knockout. But today is a huge day. It's the 20th anniversary of the UFC, so to be completely frank, I wanted uh, some airtime. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, on my way to the cage, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger. And as a kid, I spent a lot of time watching his films and thought that it might be his time to watch me for a bit as well. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Cowboy, I have a question for you. You spoke about uh, possibly dropping weight classes before this fight. Was that something of a preemptive you know, strike in case it didn't go your way tonight? No, I had nothing to do with that. I, I figured I wanted to do that anyways. But uh, if you asked me yesterday if I want to go to 45, I would have said, hell no. But uh, I'm going to get with the dietitian and see how it goes, if I can make it healthy. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be sickly or anything like that. So if I can do it 100%, yeah, absolutely, I'm going to give it hell. And uh, I'm still going to fight 55, but I'll go to 45 as well. Why not? Stay active. And actually, Chael, that kind of carries over a weight class question for you. Do you believe that you should stay at 205, or do you think that you'll be more successful at 185? Again? I think I compete my best at, at 185. I've been trying to adjust to 205, and um, I, I don't feel like they're too big, but there's, there's a couple of positions that I'm just not able uh, to get out of at, at 205 where I'm, I'm just simply held down. So I think that I, I, I could do my better uh, uh, comp competitive work at 185. Thanks. A question for Johnny Hendricks. Johnny, just to clarify, did did you see the the fight 48-47? Did that seem fair the judge that gave it to you or did you think it was more in your favor? Uh I knew that I was going to have to compete against the champion. I knew I was going to have to beat the champion. So I figured 48-47 easily my way. You know what I mean? Uh <clears throat> so that wasn't that was nothing uh against it. So yeah, I thought I thought I clearly won the uh 3 rounds. You know, I'll give him two, but uh, it is what it is. You know, like I said, I'll I'll be back. I'll be back. Could I pose that same question to Dana? Did you think forty-eight, forty-seven Hendricks was appropriate? I gave George St. Pierre the third round. Just one round. And could I ask George since he just arrived? Uh, George, did you uh, see? Did you think that the two judges that gave you the fight forty-eight, forty-seven was that a fair representation to you, or did you think you won more than three rounds? I, th I thought I, I won three round uh, out of uh, out of five. I thought the the last round was the decisive one, and I, I did I, I I left everything I had like I I, I left it all in the octagon. Uh, People can say whatever they want is up to the judges, uh, but I, I I give my best and uh, my my hands up uh, to Johnny Andres. I get I get very emotional uh, after a fight. You know I have so much stress, so much stuff going on in my life uh, right now, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean uh, I uh, it is what it is. You know I had sorry I'm late. I had to to get some stitches. You know uh, they they give me some stitches, but. Uh, I want to. I didn't want to miss this. Uh, this question is for Dana. Dana, is this something you can take away from maybe a NASCAR chapter where drivers come off the track and retaliate because there's so much going on after the race with adrenaline, where things are said, maybe something that can be more coached to the fighters, knowing that they're on national live television and what they say, obviously everybody hears immediately. What do you mean? Well, by saying basically I'm going to take some time off knowing how that's going to react to the fans. So, you know, when a NASCAR driver comes flying off the track, he's mad at somebody, he retaliates, they try to stop it immediately. Just wondering, is it something that NASCAR can do to maybe better coach just to kind of give them heads up when, you know, things were flying a little bit beforehand that he was possibly talking about retirement and now you're on national TV and the microphone's handed to you. So just... Yeah, I, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't believe in... Uh, and telling guys what to say. I, I never have, and, and I never will, unless you say something that's just completely stupid and out of line, you know. Um, but no, I mean, these guys are, are grown men. They're their own men, and they can say whatever they want. George, I, I know it's still, uh, you know, very soon after the fight, a very difficult fight, but you've got a lot of fans wondering what exactly you meant when you were in the cage and said you need time away. I know it was tough to explain, but can you give us any insight at all? We're, we're just left wondering, is it a retirement? Is it a vacation? Is it, you know, personal problems? Can, can you give us any insight at all to understand what's going on? Uh, uh, not, 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 not right now. No, I can't, I can't tell you. I just, uh, I just get hit. I just came out of a freaking war, you know, that with the guy that hit the, hit like a truck, you know, my brain get bashed left and right inside my skull, you know, <laughs> so I just need a, need a, 
need to think and uh, you know what I mean see what's what's, what's gonna happen you know I get very emotional I, I've anyway I have a I'm gonna have a talk with uh, with the with the guys and uh, see what's gonna happen you know and uh, I say thank you uh, everyone everyone for the support you know the UFC always been there with me and they always support me uh, they're the one who who made me uh, my lifestyle with my family I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to them and uh, I will never turn my back to UFC, never, ever. In some ways, that does sound like a possible retirement speech. I mean, is there any chance at all that this is the last time we'll ever see you, or do you feel like you will fight again at some point? I, I don't know. Uh, listen, I, I, like I said, I, I need to think. I, I, I have stuff going on in my life, and I cannot. Uh, I, need to, I need to make a point in my life, okay? And um, this is my personal life. I cannot speak to you about, about this. You're a reporter. I know your job is to make a uh, thing uh, public, but... I have a personal life. I, I keep personal some of some of my some of my stuff, and uh, the only thing I can say uh, about this fight is I give my best. Uh, like it or hate it, I give everything I had, and um, I want to say thanks to uh, to uh, to Johnny uh, for for the fight. And thank you for the fan and everybody. I hope they appreciate the show. I give I give it all. I, I left everything in here and there. And just one final thing, George, Dana, before you came in, said he felt like you kind of had a responsibility both to Johnny and to the fans to fight him again because it was such a close fight. Do you, do you buy into that at all, that you have an inherent responsibility to fight him again, or do you feel like that's, that's wrong? No, I, I understand that from the point of view uh, for, for the UFC and everything. Um, you know, it's bad for them if I leave, if I leave like this. But like I said, I... I need to make a need need to make a point, man. I can't I can't I can't sleep at night now. I'm I'm going crazy. I had issues, man. I uh, I need to relax. I need to get out for a while, you know. I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need, I, I'm <laughs> I'm uh, I feel like I'm gonna left everything out now, but I have to keep some of my stuff, some of part of my life personal. Okay, I've uh, I need to get out for for a little bit. Like I need to make a point and. Uh, that's it, you know. Um, I I I give everything I had tonight, and uh, and uh, hey, like it, hey, love it, and that's me at my best. I give everything, and uh, that's that's all I can say. George, George, is this is this uh, an extension of what you've talked about to some of us about the way you obsess over an opponent? That it just is so much that you just need a break from that. Let's not th don't answer that question. Don't ask him that question anymore. He doesn't want to answer that question. Okay. Can you can you tell me from your standpoint, from where you are, what would you advise Dana to do with the belt if you do want a break? We'll Should talk. He? We'll talk. Can we'll answer? talk. I'm going to talk to the guy. He doesn't want to talk about it. He, he said it ten times. I'll talk to him. He and I will leave here and we will go talk. Any other questions that have nothing to do with him retiring or the belt? George, in French, we can translate it in English. I don't want to tell you the trucs, but I just want to know how many times you know that you will proceed to this announcement this evening. I read it this evening. Okay. 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 I t always said it's going to be on the time uh, as I feel it. And, uh, Is that the same question? Tonight I felt it. I think that's the same question, <laughs> but in a different language. J'ai senti ce soir que c'était le temps de le dire. If you say it in a different language, it doesn't make it a different question. <laughs> Are we good, everybody?